John Lamb. I'm going to record his live update to YouTube, his first attempt. Mine went so great. Okay, now do this other one too. Full screen back, this graphic going live. You can show buttons again by swiping inward. We'll just try it here. Okay, well, your uh, Facebook's live. Okay. And this one's just, it's. You know, it's showing me. It's showing you at the There's top a, of the screen there. You push a. Give us just a minute, button. everyone. We're practicing with some new equipment here. I think. Is it me? Yeah. Okay, give me just a second here. Let's see. Sure. Okay. Now is it working? Yeah. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. We're down here at Las Vegas Federal Courthouse again. The day is day 15 in the Bundy trial. We've got uh, some very breaking news, some very good news that's happening in this court today that uh, we're going to try to update you. Right now, um, they're in a sealed procedure again, sealed hearing. We spent about an hour and a half in court this morning. Uh, and, uh, we didn't get started until after 9.15 this morning. We were supposed to get started at 8 o'clock. The judge was over an hour late. A lot of new motions have been filed over the last few days uh, that we've been in this break. And last night, even another late night motion was filed by one of the defense attorneys for Ammon Bundy. We, um, we had biggest news today. We had seven Brady violations that the judge has uh, agreed, at least at this point, that has been committed by the prosecution. Seven of them. Them are just in open court. There are many more that are in this sealed um, and dismissal that we haven't got to hear yet. And so the defense attorneys are scrambling up there. They're all excited on what's going on. Uh, a lot of smiles a day. One of the other biggest things that happened today is that, is that the uh, judge ordered the jurors to go home today and tomorrow. The jurors are not supposed to come back until Wednesday, at, if, if at all. That's how she pretty much said it in court today, that the jurors are not to come back until Wednesday morning, if at all. So she mentioned that um, that uh, because of the, all these Brady violations and all this other stuff that we need to go over today and tomorrow in these sealed hearings, we may not be able to be in most of it. But she mentioned that um, this case could be a mistrial or a dismissal. And she didn't say that lightly because of everything that's been happening. She mentioned Giggly versus U.S. Um, about police officers. Giglio. It's, uh, I always get these things right. Good thing I got help back here. <laughs> the Giglio versus U.S. It's about police officers that have uh, done things in the past that the defense has to uh, disclose to the defense. The prosecution has to disclose this to the defense. They never did in none of these cases. Um, we've got um, the other Supreme Court law. What was that one there? That Brady versus Brady, Maryland. Brady, Brady versus Maryland. That's a big one. Seven of these Brady violations were read off in court today and many more that are being discussed behind closed doors right now. The way it looks, and we're not 100% sure, but this case does not look like it's gonna go any further. Um, it looks like that it could be over with. We don't know. Uh, she also mentioned that, uh, that, uh, that, 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 I'm trying to go back to my notes here, but, she also mentioned several things that, like FBI agent Gavin, on November 10th, uh, created a new document that had not been seen before, but the stuff in the document had been seen, but this was a new document that was handed over to the defense on November 11th, and the prosecution's claiming that they, they gave this in a timely manner because it was created November 10th. But it actually, the information in it was all the way back until 2014 that there was never disclo disclosed to the, um, to the defense. The threat assessments, the task force reports, the joint task force reports, the, um, the um, SWAT team that came from Los Angeles and Las Vegas, all those things were mentioned today. And none of this stuff was made public 
to the defense until now. The snipers were talked about over and over again. Emails from Dan Love. The judge was not even for sure yet if those emails from Dan Love had been turned over to the defense as he knew the day, and she ordered this back in November to be turned over. There are so many violations that have been um, that have been brought up today that that um, this case should be dismissed with prejudice. But we're going to see what happens. We're not allowed back in the courtroom now, so we're just going to be waiting outside the courthouse here and see if we get a chance or get a sneak peek of what's going on in there off and on throughout the day. But looks like the rest of the day and all day tomorrow will definitely be in a lot of sealed procedures and sealed hearings here why these defense attorneys and the prosecutors argue this out. One of the things I observed from the prosecution team today, the prosecution team was not their jolly self. They was not smiling at all. They were literally over there shaking in the, in the prosecution uh, table. They, um, they were uh, conversing a lot among themselves, discussing what they were going to say. And, and uh, Steve Myrie did not say a word in open court today. It was all left up to Daniel Seish. He was the only one that did any amount of argument. And he pleaded with the judge to give him at least 45 minutes to um, give a rebuttal to some of this. He says the, the prosecution team definitely has a different side than what the, the, the defense has. And we want at least 45 minutes to rebuttal this. The judge went in and she said, I thought you already answered most of these. And he says, well, there's a lot of new stuff and we got to answer a lot of stuff. So the rest of the day is going to be very, very uh, tense. We're going to be waiting down here and see what happens. Um, see if this judge does give us a dismissal or, or a uh, mistrial in this case, or if we're going to move forward. But um, right now, the jurors are not going to be back again until at least Wednesday at the soonest. So we've got another week here. It looks like that it's just prolonging on. The case is not going. The jurors are not there. We're at day 15. We're in the middle of uh, December. Uh, when is this case going to end? That's the big question. And let's pray that the right thing is done and it is dismissed with prejudice and that this case will not continue. We'll have you some more updates throughout the day. Um, we've got some new equipment here we're trying to test out, so hopefully it's all working on that end. But uh, other than that, we're going to sign off for now, and we'll be back as soon as we get any information or new news from the courthouse. Yes. Sure. Kitty Rhodes here again from Michigan. Yeah, I'm down here, and we went and picked up John at the airport last night and brought him back in. He was sick last week, and he made me sick, too, because I had to go to California and get over this flu. But John still, John will not ask you, but, but still a little bit of money every now and then to help John out, because I know that the plane ticket back home is not cheap. He spends all his time, he's got 11 kids at home, and I mean, 11, 11 children, 11 children at home and five kids. The kids are the goats. But if you could send a little bit of money to John, I appreciate it. I gave him $5. That's all I had. So, so all of you take care of John. And y'all all have a great day. Thank you. Well, thanks a lot. Kenny got to sit in the courtroom today for once. Uh, he's, he's a witness in this case, and he um, hasn't been permitted in the courtroom. But because of the, um, the day without the jurors, he could sit there unless the jurors were in. So he got to see a little bit of this uh, stuff going on today. And uh, it's pretty exciting to see that um, this case might be wrapping up. Yeah, I, well, I don't, I think, well, they don't have a case. That's the problem, they don't have a case. And we're down here at the bottom of the Terry Towers, because that's exactly what it is, because now we, we can't even go back in, because they don't want the public to hear what they got to say now. So they're all putting it under seal again. So what, if, if, if the truth's gonna be heard, why does it need to be sealed where the news, nobody can hear it, and put it out what they're doing. I guarantee you it's not the defense that wants this sealed. We would like it to be public. We want to expose. That's what the whole thing's about, is exposing the government tyranny, government overreach, what's going on here. We want it exposed. We want the public to see this. But the prosecution and the judge definitely does not want this to be um, be made public. It, it's an embarrassment to them for what they've done all along. All the charges have been stacked. It. Um, it, it just it just shouldn't have happened in the very beginning. 
Absolutely. Okay, John, you're doing a good job. Well, thanks I, a lot. I'll, I'll mess it up. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, everybody. We'll be back as quick as we know of any new information. <laughs> Hey, Ken. Say hi. You got one already? Okay. I didn't know we could go in there uh, on the witness list. They told me. Uh, yeah. Huh. They told me that I wasn't supposed to, but, uh, but I've got a lot of different information from some of these marshals and stuff in there. None of them seems to know the same thing. But, but I ain't going in, kind of don't want to be disqualified. Right. Well, I'm recording this, and I'm gonna put it up later. Okay. I appreciate you. Sure do, Ken. Thank you very much. I just had to try to get John a bit of money because no, no, he, no, he does need it. He's done a lot of traveling. And got an old car. He's got 198,000 miles. He needs a few dollars. Absolutely. Well, I'm gonna shut this off. Okay. Thank you.